Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn, and this is Traditional Woodworking by Hand. And today we're going to be talking about the Prince of Hand Tools. As many of you probably know, if you make a groove in a piece of wood, in the workpiece, depending on its relationship to the grain and the width and the direction and whether it's on the surface or the edge, it has different names in woodworking. If it goes along the edge of a piece of wood, then it's typically known as a rabbit. If it goes across the grain in the middle of the wood, then it's typically known as a dado. But a depression, whether it's curved or straight, that goes somewhere in the middle of the wood that's the one that in woodworking is actually called a groove. Now, there are a lot of different ways to make these, but the preeminent tool for making grooves in a non-electric world is the plow plane. And now this is probably the most collectible and the most sought after and one of the most prized of all hand tools. Uh, and it exists in various varieties. This particular one is a Scottish one made at the turn of the century. Um, and it differs from many of the cheaper varieties by the fact that, first of all, it has a nice handle. Secondly, it has a depth stop. That's what this screw does here. You turn this screw and it lowers this piece here, which determines how deep the groove is. And furthermore, it has another little screw here designed to keep the depth stop fixed. Now you'll notice a few other curious things about this plane. First of all, it has a movable fence. And that's what allows you to make a groove almost anywhere in the piece of wood, depending on how big the screws are. So right now I have it set up to take a groove here and if I do this and you'll notice that I started by working at the far end. That's because for this tool to work properly and efficiently it's really important to keep the fence, that's this part, tight to the work. If I started at this end it's possible that I could wander away. But by starting at the far end, then that helps that I always have a straight groove to plow into. Now let's look at this a little more closely. This, as I said, is apart from the fact that the whole class of tools are, are known as the Prince of Tools. This is a really good one. It has a handle, it has the depth stop. Um, and the way that the fence is adjusted, which is one of the most important things, is you have these knobs here, really beautiful turned knobs. And, and if I wanted the groove that I just made here to be close to the edge, I would have to adjust the fence. And I would push the fence in like this, a little more. Loosen these up here. And this goes in. And then I would tighten the outer nuts to it. And the most important thing when you do this is to make sure that you have the skate, that's the metal piece that the blade comes down, exactly parallel to the fence. So we're going to measure this. And if you look closely, you can see that the inside of the skate is just a little over an inch away from the fence. At this end, it's just a little under. So. For me to make a really good groove, I have to adjust this just a little bit, then tighten that back down until here. Now, both ends of the fence, both ends of the skate rather, are the same distance from the fence. That's probably the most important thing to do if you're going to use one of these successfully. There's a few other things I should point out. Uh, that make this a particularly good example and that as I already said this metal piece that holds the iron or the blade uh, is known as the skate the front part of the skate and the bottom part of the skate and the skate together with the fence 
extends past the front of the plane, whereas at the back, they're parallel. This is done so that you can, in fact, start the groove and make sure that you're always planing into the same groove. Now, another thing that's really unusual about one of these is that typically when these were sold, they came with a set of eight irons of different widths. And you can see on the bench here, I have a whole selection of different shaped irons. These are the irons that came with this particular plane. Originally, there would have been eight. At this stage of the game, I only have six, including the one that's in here. But in a very, very, very rare example of uh, things being the same in woodworking, all irons designed to work in plow planes will fit in pra practically all other plow planes, regardless of the maker. This plane was made by the famous Scottish tool makers, Alexander Matheson in, in Glasgow, probably around 1910 or 1890 or something like that. But these irons are all made by a firm called Burton. These are other odd irons. Interestingly, you can tell that it's an iron for a plow plane because no matter who made the irons, invariably they will fit in whatever plow plane you get. And that's because of the way that the iron fits into the plane. Plow plane irons have this groove along the back here. And it's the groove that sits against the rear skate. If you look closely, you can see that this is held in place by fitting against that, that makes it possible for almost any iron to fit any plane. So if you happen to be looking for plow planes, whether you're online or at flea markets or whatever, don't be discouraged if it doesn't come with a full set of irons. And at the same time, if you happen to find these rather unique looking plain irons, you often find them in boxes of old rusty files and things, but they typically have a little nib here that you can use to help back the plane out, but they all have this groove here. Now, another interesting thing about the Prince of Tools, the plow plane, is that I'm using this, of course, to make a groove that's exactly the same width as the iron that I've got in here. This one is like three quarters, but it's no big deal if I wanted to make that uh, this groove a little closer to the edge or a little wider to loosen these things. And as I said before, making sure that the distance between the front of the skate and the fence and the back of the skate and the fence is exactly equal. I can pretty much with one iron, I can make a groove of almost any width, but it helps to have irons that are close to the common size grooves that you might want. Another thing that's different about this plane is that aside from the rabbit plane, which we've talked about before and which we'll go into greater detail in the future, the rabbit plane is distinguished by the fact that it has this really nice shape here, which is designed to throw the shavings that come up through the mouth here off the bench. So if I use this here, you can see that the shavings are coming out off the bench. Whereas the power plane, which is the only other plane made that has a similar shaped hole, this throws the shavings onto the bench. An interesting fact. Now, you're probably asking yourselves, well, that's all very well, and it would be a great thing to have a really nice plow plane, and now I know about how to look for irons, and I know a few details about how to make sure that it cuts the groove right, but there must have been something that replaced that. Well, yes, there was. Before the electric router. When Stanley got into the name of the game, in an effort to reduce the amount of tools that workers, carpenters, house carpenters had to carry around, they made a series of planes which a lot of people collect 
the mo po most popular one of which is the Stanley 55. You can see the number on the front there, right? And there's a smaller version which had fewer blades. And there's even another version that has a skewed blade, which is, as I've explained before, is the ideal tool to use if you're going across the grain. These planes, if you're lucky enough to find one in good condition with all its parts, they also all come with several boxes of different blades because they were designed to eradicate the need to carry around a giant toolbox. And with one plane, you could do beading and planing and edging and dadoing and grooving. You could do all kinds of things. But if you're working in a shop today, although I have these planes and I've used them, it takes so long to learn how to adjust them and to set them all up that I almost never use them. If I want to make a groove, it's much easier for me simply to reach for my regular plow plane and bingo, I'm in action right from the get-go. So, I think that's an interesting little introduction to the Prince of Tools. And if you can remember those important things about keeping the fence exactly the same distance away from the skate, and the fact that by adjusting the fence, you can make grooves that are different widths than the actual irons that you have. And by using the depth stop, you can determine how deep the groove is. You'll have a tool that is quiet, pleasant, looks extremely handsome and will make the best grooves you could possibly hope for. Just to show you how many more kinds of plows there are, in the book I wrote on traditional woodworking hand tools, there's an entire chapter on the plow. And you'll notice that it's spelt P-L-O-U-G-H. And there's an interesting little side to that. I know that in America, the word plow is typically spelled P-L-O-W. But when these planes were first imported and first started to be used in America, most Americans still used the old British spelling. And by the time these planes had become replaced by the Stanley 45s, not to mention the electric router, it was only then that the spelling changed to the common American spelling P-L-O-W. So there never was one of these that was made or sold as a P-L-O-W. Now, just to be exact, the Prince of Hand Tools is the plow plane. Anyway, in this particular book, you can see everything that we've talked about here. You can see the difference between European plow planes, American plow planes, different ways that the wedges were fit together, um, important facts of how to use them. I can recommend that if you want to know more about the plow plane, which we'll be using shortly when we start making some projects, that you should look out for one of these. Anyway, this was fun. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, send me comments, ask me questions, and uh, I hope you have a good time making some grooves. Thank you.